Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. And we have people coming in and taking what they didn't work for is really tough. <laughs> It's a place where community members gather, where those with disabilities experience nature, and where produce flourishes. But it's getting picked over by vandals. Community garden members say they are fed up and tired of people stealing their vegetables. Valley News Team's Brad Frederick gets to the root of the problem. You know, we have a no trespassing sign. A lot of good that does. Mandy Johnson says she doesn't have a green thumb, but watching her, you'd think so. These are our tomatoes. And they don't look very pretty, but they taste great. That great taste must be why some garden variety gangsters stole the fruits of someone else's labor. These pictures were taken starting the middle of last week. The person with a development of disability or whatever has that box in their hands and they're carrying it to their car for them. They're beaming. They're so excited. Like, this is what I did. The garden serves as a sort of classroom for many people with a range of disabilities, teaching real world skills. And for the sake of those individuals and others, Mandy Johnson reached out but not to the police. Police have way more important things to do than worry about our vegetables. Really, they do. And we have plenty. It's just the principle of the thing, I think. It's just the idea that, you know, they didn't plant it, they, they didn't care for it. While there's been no report given to the Fargo police, they say they are aware of this weekend's veggie vandalism. They say it's a hard crime to combat. The police department says this is a community garden. It's a shared space, and that means it's hard to know who should and should not be here. Johnson says she's not out for blood or prosecution. She just wants people to stop stealing. If people need veggies so bad, Johnson says all they have to do is ask. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. The community garden offers CSA memberships, donates a portion of what they grow to those in need, sells produce to area-assisted living facilities, and is always looking for volunteers. We've put a link for more information about the community garden on our website. Go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Well, the family of a missing teen is asking for your help to find Lexia Galindo. She was last heard from about 3 a.m. this past Sunday in Dilworth. The 14-year-old allegedly cut all ties with social media. The family believes that Lexia may be in Dilworth or West Fargo. The Dilworth Police Department says it's simply a case of a runaway teen, and they do not believe that there's anything suspicious in relation to Lexia's missing. Now, you're asked to call authorities if you have any information. It's a cool, cloudy start to our work week. Let's see if the skies will part tonight or if some of us will see some raindrops. Here's Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson with a first look. Hutch. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And as we begin our work week, we are beginning with some change. So we've been very warm, but we have a little cool front sweeping across the valley. That's causing the clouds that you see for much of our area, although, although we're also dealing with some of that haze and smoke from the wildfires out west. Just a few sprinkles showing up on the radar, mainly south of Fargo, Moorhead, and east. That's where the chances will be best. It will be quite light. Temperatures in the 70s to the west this evening and down to the south will remain in the 80s. Fargo right on that line will be right at about 80 degrees for most of our cloudy evening. I think we stay dry here in the FM area and it does look like we cool off into the 70s. A little bit cooler for the overnight. That's one thing we'll notice, but the hot weather returns and we'll tell you about a chance of some storms as the holiday weekend approaches as well. So that warm weather is sticking around. It looks like it. All yep. right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Some Minnesota drivers may have had their records viewed without permission. The Department of Public Safety and Minnesota IT Services discovered and stopped the problem. They determined that two people conducted 55 queries of the driver's license database from August 2nd until August 24th. During that time, 18 people had their data viewed without permission. The data that may have been viewed includes driver's license numbers, pictures, names, addresses, and dates of birth. Letters informing the 18 people of the data breach were mailed out today. It's the beginning of some permanent changes in downtown Fargo, and those changes involve a major north-south traffic artery. Works underway on the lift station on 2nd Street, just east of City Hall. This is part of the ongoing flood protection project. The permanent change involves 2nd Street. It's closed between 1st and 3rd Avenues North. It's going to remain closed until next fall when the flood wall 
and the lift station are finished. At that point, 2nd Street will be realigned, creating more green space and a walking path along the river. It should also mean the massive emergency levees that have been the hallmark of spring flooding would not have to be built. Work on the flood walls is expected to start in September. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani will headline the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber's sixth annual Voice of Vision event. At the Wednesday, November 11th event, Giuliani's going to give a presentation titled Principled Leadership. It's in the face of change and crisis. The focus is expected to be on lessons that he learned leading New York City through the 9-11 terror attacks and how attendees can apply those lessons to their own lives. The Cold War has long been over, but the Air Force in North Dakota is keeping up to date with all the latest high-tech means to monitor the northern border. $65 million worth of improvements are underway at the Cavalier Air Station. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us the latest Star Wars-like technology right here in the Valley. North Dakota Senator John Hoven played a part in securing $65 million worth of upgrades here at the Cavalier Air Station. Part of the funds are being used to improve housing for the 40 airmen who call this home. Much of the millions of dollars worth of upgrades are being spent on that radar building back there. It scans the northern hemisphere and space. My camera wasn't allowed inside, but officials say upgrading the equipment here to track potential missile threats is still important. And obviously with what's going on with Russia right now, that mission is more important than ever because we do see Russia testing our boundaries with their new aircraft and, and their new systems. And so it's a very important system. The equipment in this building also tracks all satellites that fly overhead. It's important for us to characterize any kind of maneuvers uh, or anything else that's happening in space because uh, it's not it's not just a few isolated satellites out there from us, Russia and China. Everyone's got uh, a, a place in the game. Security even includes technology to protect the building from weapons that produce electromagnetic pulses designed to disable radar. It would take somebody pretty sophisticated to detonate that kind of device. Mm -hmm. But again, obviously, we take no chances. Hoven says the usefulness of this site goes beyond the military. He says it's also tied to an overall homeland security program that includes keeping watch over the United States' northern border. From Cavalier, North Dakota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Upgrades to the radar station building are scheduled to be completed by the end of the year, and more upgrades to housing are also on the way. Well, the president of the U.S. is leaving all comforts of the White House behind to trek through the wilderness with survival expert Bear Grylls. The announcement was made by NBC and Electus. President Obama will be featured in a special edition of Running Wild with Bear Grylls during a visit to Alaska. The president will meet with Grylls to observe the effects of climate change on the area. The visit will also be taped and aired later this year. It's our Back to School Monday, and today we are talking about the importance of a healthy meal for your student. Dietitians say kids need a well-balanced diet to help them succeed in school. Fruits, vegetables, protein, and carbs are all needed to fuel your child's day. Fast breakfast ideas include peanut butter banana wraps and English muffin egg pizzas whole grains and lean proteins are always something that you want to be including when you can. Um, dairy, making sure that you're providing them with dairy so they can build some strong bones too for the future. Now for more recipes that are quick and healthy, go to valleynewslive.com and click on the back to school page at the top of our homepage. It's a day of giving at a local restaurant today. Special Olympics of North Dakota and Granite City Food and Brewery came together for a fundraiser called Dine to Donate. The concept is simple. All you have to do is show a flyer of the event and 20% of your tab will be given to Special Olympics of North Dakota. If you'd like to help out, we have the poster on valleynewslive.com. Just click on the hot button. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department is taking submissions for a photo contest that could land you on the cover of the 2016 Private Land Open to Sportsman Guide. The department's free plots guide highlights walk-in hunting areas all across the state. 
Hunters are asked to submit a photo that represents North Dakota's hunting heritage. The contest deadline is April 30th, and all submissions should include a PLOTS sign in the photo. For more information, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Still ahead for us tonight, your favorite Netflix films could be going away. We'll tell you some of the popular movies that you're saying goodbye to. Low clouds and gray skies across the valley today, but the heat returns. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast and the outlook for the holiday weekend is next.